Today I'm gonna to share two amazing tricks for refining selective adjustments in Lightroom. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now when you're editing a photo in Lightroom, you obviously will make a selective adjustment of some kind, whether that be a radial filter, a gradient filter, or an adjustment brush selection. Now the one problem that I've always found with these tools is that when you make an adjustment, it's affecting a very large area. Even with the adjustment brush, it's hard to go along edges without spilling over and Unless you want to spend a ton of time refining the brush size, the flow, the opacity, and really going along the edge manually. However, with these two tricks in Lightroom, you can completely change the way you make those selective adjustments. The first thing that we'll talk about is the auto mask feature with the adjustment brush. And then after that, we'll talk about the two different types of arranged masks that you can use as well. The first one uses color while the second one uses luminance. Both of them are amazing for different situations. And I'm gonna break down exactly what types of photos they work best for. So with that, let's hop into Lightroom and see how these amazing tools will change the way you make selective adjustments. Now, before we talk about these two techniques, let's first identify the problem that we're having. So using the adjustment brush here, I'm gonna try to make a selection around these mountains so I can darken them a little bit. So I'll just zoom in here and with my adjustment brush, I'm just going to try to paint along the edges here as best I can, just doing a quick little thing, nothing different than what I typically would do. Going all the way along here, I can actually see this red selection area because I pressed O on my keyboard. So if you would like to do the same thing, just press O. But going along the edges of the mountain here, that is just gonna be my general selection for right now. I'll press O here, and if I bring down the exposure to see what's going on, it did in fact select the mountains, but it's now also affecting the sky. And the problem with that is that's gonna end up creating haloing with your adjustments, and it just doesn't look very good. It looks super beginner and just not very nice. The only other option that you might have previously was to go and hold the Alt or Option key and then manually refine that edge of the mask, but that ends up being a huge time waste. What if there's a way to select the edges of your photo in Lightroom? So that's where the auto mask feature comes into play. Deleting that adjustment, I'm going to once again select my adjustment brush, but this time go down to my brush settings and click the auto mask option. Now watch what happens when we go to make the selection around the mountains. With my brush settings the exact same, I'm going to begin painting around, pressing O so I can make that selection area visible and I'm just going to continue along the edge of the mountains. This time notice how none of the selection area is spilling over onto the sky even though I'm pretty darn close to the edge of the mountains. Doing the exact same thing as I was doing before I would have spilled over onto the sky but this time it's only affecting the mountains. So I'm just going to fill the rest of this in here. Press O to hide that selection area. And now I'm gonna decrease that exposure again. And now look what has happened. This time, only the mountains have been affected by the selection area. And that's because we've used auto mask. And the way this tool works is it samples the center of your brush and only will add similar hues and exposure values into your selection area. So since the mountains have a significantly different look than the sky, Lightroom is able to differentiate the two and make sure that the mask does not spill over the edge of the mountains. So this is a really amazing way to refine the way you make selective adjustments because it doesn't just work for mountains, it obviously can work for people, it can work for animals, it can work for anything in your photo that you want to selectively adjust without spilling over and getting that haloed look that you typically will get when using these kind of adjustments. Now you obviously don't have to make such a drastic adjustment like we have here, but we could just use this to darken them slightly, maybe bring down the highlights a little, add a bit of contrast in there, warm them up a little bit, something like this. And then suddenly you can get a really nice selective adjustment that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise without auto mask. Because if we were to do this without auto mask, we would end up affecting a whole bunch of the sky. So let's quickly go through another example with auto mask. Again, using the adjustment brush, I'm gonna click on auto mask and this time I'm gonna select the trees. Since it is selecting the green area in the middle of a brush, pressing O so I can make that visible here. Since it's selecting that green area, it's not gonna go over and select the mountains or anything like that. It's just noticing the edge of the trees and it's only sticking to that area and nothing else. Even if I go down to the reflection, notice how it's only 
affecting the trees in the reflection because there's that nice edge contrast between the trees and the mountains slash sky in the reflection area. So going through filling all of that in like so. Now we can make those same adjustments, but this time it will only affect the trees and it doesn't actually spill over or cause any haloing or anything like that. So again, the auto mask feature is coming in to save the day once again. So you can use this for so many different applications. It's unbelievable. However, the auto mask feature is only available with the adjustment brush. You won't find it with the radial filter or the gradient filter. This is only for the adjustment brush. Now with that said, that brings us into our other option, which is the range masks. And that is available between the adjustment brush, radial filter, and the gradient filter. So let's talk about how that works. For this example, I'm going to add a new gradient filter and I'm just going to put it across the sky like so. I'm actually going to purposely select some of the mountains just for this example. Now, let's say I want to decrease the exposure of the sky just to make it pop a little bit more. Now, the problem with these gradient adjustments typically is what you see right here. It is now dark in the mountains and things like that. And even if we had moved it up, it would kind of add a weird look and it kind of has a vignette feel to it. So what if we wanted to darken the sky completely, but we don't want to select all this other area. We still want that gradient look without all the other areas being affected. Well, that's where range masks come into play. Going down to the bottom of my masking options here, you see the range mask. By default, it's set to off, but if we click on it, we can select the color or luminance options. For this example, I'm going to select color. Now, immediately nothing will happen. However, you have a little eyedropper tool, and what you can do with this is select a color that you want to effect. So in this case, since I want to affect the blue in the sky, I'll click on the eyedropper tool and go and sample a color in the sky like so. Now look how that adjustment area has been refined. If I press O to view that, it has now refined that gradient adjustment to only affect those blue hues within the sky. So now I can go and make those adjustments to my sky individually without affecting anything else using the gradient filter. So again, this is an amazing way that you can refine your selective adjustments and completely change the way you edit photos in Lightroom. In this example, we only have a solid colored sky, but if you had different colors that you wanted to include in a single selection area, you could hold the shift key and notice how I now have a plus icon beside Inside my eyedropper tool, I can now click again and add a secondary color sample area to this selection. So you can do that however many times you'd like, and then you can just completely refine what colors are included in your selection area with a few different sampled areas. Now, once you have made that initial selection, you can further refine it using this amount slider. Now, the amount slider basically changes how much tolerance there is from your exact sample area to what is selected. So if I bring down the amount slider, notice how it starts to get a little more picky with what is being selected. So there's a little less around the edge of the mountains, and there's a bit of haloing and ghosting going on here. And then if I go and bring up this slider, it does the opposite and it starts to spill over onto the mountains and it definitely is now covering up the clouds. So the amount slider can dictate how specific your sample is and include or exclude certain color ranges from your adjustment. So now that you understand how the color sample works, let's now talk about luminance. So for this example, we're gonna use the luminance option to make a selection around this palm tree. Now the palm tree obviously would be pretty darn difficult to select with a regular adjustment brush or radial filter or anything like that because there's so many tiny edges in all of the branches here. Now because there's so much contrast between the sky and the palm tree itself, that means that we can use the luminance value to refine our range mask. So in this case, I'll use the adjustment brush, but you could also use the radial filter or the gradient filter, whatever one you wanna use. So using my adjustment brush, I'm just gonna make a large general selection here. This is not with auto mask, this is just the default mode that you're using when you have the adjustment brush. So I now have everything in my palm tree selected, including some of the white sky. Now what I wanna do is refine the selection so it doesn't affect any of the white sky and it's only affecting the palm tree. So what I can do is scroll down just below my brush options. I have the range mask tool. I can click on that and go down to luminance. Very similar to the color option, we have a eyedropper tool, but this time it's gonna be sampling the exposure or brightness of different areas in your photo. Depending on where you sample, it's going to select that exposure range to refine your selection into. So clicking on my eyedropper tool, I'll go and pick a darker area in the palm tree here. 
and look how it suddenly has refined that area for me. I can then go and sample a different area, which is more of a mid-tones. And then if you look at the range option right here, you notice how these two sliders have moved a little closer together. So those are what dictate what luminance values are included in your selection. So you can manually adjust these if you want. So you can start to add a little more into your selection or a little less, depending on what you're into. But in this case, I can just refine these a little bit like so. And now I have a really nice selection around the whole palm tree, but there is nothing affecting the background. And that's because of the luminance value. So pressing O here, I can now make those adjustments directly to my palm tree and look how good that looks. It's not making any adjustments to the background. It's only affecting the tree branches. And now you can make really advanced adjustments without worrying about anything spilling over onto your background. So again, you can use this with any of your three tools, whether it be the adjustment brush, radial filter, or the gradient filter. All of it works the exact same way, and it's found down here within the range masks. Now from there, you can further refine your adjustment by changing the smoothness slider. By bringing it down, it's going to make the luminance value that you sampled a lot more specific, so it's going to exclude things and basically reduce the tolerance. Likewise, if you bring up the smoothness, it's going to blend in your selection area a little bit more so it doesn't look as choppy if you start to have that issue. In this case, it's not really a problem, but in certain photos you might experience that. So using the smoothness slider can help fix that altogether. Now it is worth noting with the luminance option, you cannot sample two different luminance at once. Like we did with the color range mask where we added two different eyedroppers, we can't do that with the luminance option. You can only click once and that's the only sample that you can do. However, you can then further refine it using the range sliders here just to change the highlights or the shadows that are being included in your mask. Now there is one final option within the range masks called the depth feature and that is only available to cameras that actually have a depth map embedded in the photo. So those types of cameras would be the new iPhones with multiple lenses and things like that. Most digital cameras don't usually include a depth map, which is why I don't have it here. But essentially what that will do is allow you to select different depths within your photo, whether it be the background, mid ground or foreground. So then you can refine your adjustments based on how far away a subject is from your lens. So that's a really cool feature to use if you have that option. However, I do not have that option. So I only work between the luminance any color values. So between the auto masks and the range masks, you can completely change the way you make selective adjustments and where your edits take place in your photo. So whether you want to add an adjustment to a person or something specific in the background, you can do that really easily with either of these two tools. So if you learned something today and you're gonna use these two tricks in your own edits, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you for now. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.